Waves, like vibrations, are repeated motion, but waves are a bit more interesting because they travel through space. A vibration is a motion that repeats in time. The object itself doesn't go anywhere, it just vibrates back and forth. The vibration itself doesn't go anywhere, the object doesn't go anywhere. In a wave, there's a repeat in time, but a progression through space. So the wave actually travels. The wave, the disturbance, goes somewhere. However, like a vibration, the medium itself doesn't travel anywhere. The ocean still stays in the same place as the waves move across it. A very simple type of wave is a one-dimensional wave in a rope. Here I have a rope. It's a fairly, fairly heavy rope. It's not like a climbing rope, but it's a fairly heavy rope. And if I tap the rope, you'll get a wave that goes along the rope travels down the rope. Now, as you saw, when I disturbed the rope, a wave moved along the rope. Why is that? I pushed the rope up or down or side to side, and the wave moved away from me. Why did that happen? The motion of the wave was different from the push that I gave to the rope. Another question that you might consider is, what are the effects and what determines the effects that are going on. And a way to think about both of these questions is to think about what's actually happening inside the rope. What determines the speed of the wave in the rope? Similarly, you can make a qualitatively different type of wave in a slinky, or by pushing a slinky along its length, or by pulling it. And you'll see that a wave travels along the length of the slinky. So I'll ask you now to pause this video and go to the longitudinal waves in a slinky video. What causes that to move? What causes that propagation of the wave? It's not just the push opposite the direction of the pull. That's kind of interesting. Just like for the wave in the rope, we can ask what determines the speed of propagation of the wave in the slinky and what's happening inside the slinky that causes this wave to move and that determines how fast it moves. The string wave and the slinky wave illustrate two limiting types of waves. The first is the transverse wave. This was like the wave in the string. In the transverse wave, the medium moved perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave. So as I caused the rope to move up or down, the wave itself propagated along the rope, which was perpendicular to the direction of the actual motion of the rope. With the slinky, there was a wave of compression or rarefaction in which the coils of the spring moved in the same direction along the same line of propagation of the wave itself. So here we see an animation of a transverse wave. Notice that the particles are simply moving up and down, whereas the wave is moving to the right. So the wave is essentially moving through the particles. For this to happen, there has to be some kind of a communication between the particles that a moving particle will drag a particle or influence a particle near it somewhat to follow it, which causes this connection and this propagation of the wave. Here's an animation of a longitudinal wave. Same kind of an idea. These are pulses of compression and rarefaction. Here you can imagine that the particles are bumping into each other or pulling on each other in that sense, you'll get this propagation of the pulse of the wave. Just as we have vocabulary words to describe the features and characteristics of vibrations, we have more vocabulary for describing the features and characteristics of waves, because waves are more complex than vibrations. So here's a wave coming through. We'll take a snapshot of it so we can look at the different features. The crest is the maximum excursion from the equilibrium of the medium. The trough is the maximum excursion in the other direction. So you can think of the crest as being the high points and the trough as being the low points. The wavelength is the time for one repeat. Just as we had vocabulary words for different features of an oscillation, we have specific vocabulary for features of waves. Since waves are more complicated than oscillations, we have more terms. So here's a wave coming in. We'll freeze it for a moment so we can look at the pieces individually. And the crests 
are the high points or the maximum deviations of the wave. The troughs will be the low points or the maximum deviations in the opposite direction. The wavelength is the distance of one repeat of the wave. You can think of that as the distance from one crest to the next crest or one trough to the next trough. Conventionally, we use this symbol. This is a Greek lowercase letter, lambda. And the reason it's lambda is because lambda is the Greek L, which stands for length. The period click, click, is the same for a wave as it is for an oscillation. It's the time it takes for one complete repeat. The amplitude is defined just as it was for an oscillation. It's the distance from the center to the maximum excursion of the medium, either in the positive direction or in the negative direction. The frequency, again, is just like we had for a vibration. It's the number of repeats in a given unit of time, such as cycles per second. That would be hertz, just as it is for vibrations. Something that doesn't have a meaning with vibrations is the wave velocity. It's the speed that the crest of the wave moves through space. So it's the propagation speed of the wave itself. That's going to just be in meters per second. We already know that period and frequency are reciprocals of each other. Well, velocity is how far the wave moves in a given period of time. So distance divided by time. So it turns out there's a rather simple formula for velocity. It's really convenient to think of the distance of one repeat and the time of one repeat, and so then the velocity is just going to be the distance divided by the time. Well, the distance of one repeat is the wavelength, lambda, and the time for one repeat is the period t. So the velocity v is the length of one repeat, lambda, divided by the time of one repeat, t. Now, since the frequency is just the reciprocal of the period, frequency is 1 over t, we can also say that the velocity is lambda times the frequency. Then we can just do some algebraic rearrangements of this formula. We can solve it for wavelength, or we can solve it for frequency and period. 